presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to our man, George, in Newport, Richie. George, what's going on, brother? Hello, Tom. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great. Yourself? Yeah, great. I've been following you for the last two years, listening to your show. Well, thank you very much. Nice I appreciate it, George. All the hard work you've done for us over the years. Well, I really appreciate and, you calling uh, and saying hi. My pleasure, Tom. Okay. Welcome to your show. Thank you, man. Have a great one and safe Have one. Appreciate it, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> What's going on, folks? This is Jacob filling in for Tom O'Brien today. Uh, you can give us a call. You can send me an email as well. I like that, too. Jacob at TFNN.com. Let's hop in and see what we got going on. It's been a little bit since I've been with you all. We have the ES Mini trading off about 0.24%, 5,078. We have the Russell off about 0.55%. Of course, we're trading up 2,048 in the Russell. Some nice movement in the stock uh, over the past few days, at least. NQ off about 0.62%, trading 17,909, oscillating 910. Uh, the Dow futures 38,929, off about 0.22%. Right now, you know, kind of just a sideways to lower day. Gold contract uh, actually doing okay. Looks like we're having a little consolidation period in it, uh, at least uh, for the past week or so. Obviously, we had a big blowout uh, in the gold contract in general. Um, we saw some massive movements down in companies like Wheat and Precious Metal. Uh, obviously, Newmont got hit pretty hard as well. I believe we were talking about that um, maybe a few weeks ago. I think someone had called, and this isn't like a, I'm not saying this to like be like, oh yeah, look, I called it right. But what I'm trying to say is like, you had this just non-stellar movement in Newmont, right, on low volume, and it kept wanting to test these these lower bounds, right, and that can set up for a lower profile. Uh, and whatever that was in the day that sent gold prices down, well, it really uh, shocked a few of these companies. Obviously, you can see the downward trend here, and uh, it seems like we're continuing a little bit of a recovery. Not in Newmont. I mean, these are these are low lows. Trading at twenty nine eighty six currently. Uh, this is on the six month. Let me see. I mean, this is low on five year. Okay. Even lower than f roughly middle of March of 2020. So at least the gold contract, we've seen like a minor bounce back in it. Not minor. I mean, this is pretty decent, right? We had this low around. I mean, it cracked that psychological level of 2000. Um, not on significant volume or anything, but you know, we were down here for a little while, trading about 1824. We came back up. Um, this, of course, was in October of last year. And then we had that down break, excuse me. This is the one I wanted to look at in 1997 and 40 cents. And we're trading back up to 2042. And we'll see if we can maintain some stability there. That was actually, I think, somewhat like encouraging in some capacity. Uh, I'm just, I, I want to see where the large, large appeal in, in gold is going to be and what's going to send this up, right? It's seeing like, you know, these kind of peripheral, I suppose, assets or commodities. I mean, I see like crypto really taking a lot of this. And I think people do invest in crypto for the same reason they invest in gold. Again, I've spoken about that a lot, how I don't know if that's, you know, logically the best thing. Um, but regardless, I mean, we're seeing a massive you know, capital dump into crypto recently. We're seeing nothing in gold. Um, of course, these are two different vehicles entirely, but I still think you have uh, conversations societally uh, that these seek to do the same thing, which is kind of a hedge against inflation. And I, I honestly, I see this kind of being like a paradigm shift, maybe. And again, I'm young. This is really like the first time I've seen anything other than to the moon bull market, right? So this is kind of just my perspective as, you know, a 27-year-old, uh, who's only been investing for maybe about five years or something like that. Silver at 2264. Uh, copper, you know, pretty stable, still at 383, uh, off about 0.34% today. Of course, the big talk, you know, is going on with crude and uh, really natural gas as well. Um, I hadn't, I'll be honest, like I had no hope 
a natural gas was going to do anything. Um, again, like you, when I traveled to Denver, okay, they, they, you know, mine a lot out there, and, and one of the byproducts of oil is going to be natural gas, and also you just have fracking in general, uh, and they literally just burn it off. You know, there's just so much of it, and I, I think, you know, there's a lot of different things at play here. Uh, you know, I think in the Permian Basin, you're going to have natural gas being kind of like an auxiliary uh, in case there's something wrong with oil prices, so to kind of balance out energy. Uh, but, I, you know, I think they're not cutting back supply, and I, I we, there is some conversation now that there is going to be some cutback in natural gas supply, which I believe is kind of what's contributing to this momentary rally in uh in the natural gas contract and obviously moves in like boil and everything. Um, but I think they were holding out kind of cutting production in the hopes that liquefying natural gas becomes a little bit more efficient, right? And cost effective. And it stands to be seen if that's going to be the case. And if that gets pushed out a long time, I think, you know, I guess you might end up seeing more companies just kind of opt to just decrease production of purely that kind of stuff. And maybe that will increase the price of it. I don't know. It's definitely unique and, I mean, we had a viewer email me, uh, and he emails me a lot, and I, I love hearing from him, um, but he was talking about natural gas, and I was just like, listen, like, I, there's just so much of it, and people are burning it off, and I don't see why that would be a, you know, a good investment opportunity, but it was, you know, and these are like, inter this is like the interesting journey of trading, right, and thinking you have this kind of like thesis, and you run it, and then, and then reality just kind of hits you in the foot, right, but of course, that's why we have the traders here and all the newsletters kind of teach you. And I learn every day uh, from this kind of stuff. And it really is fascinating. Uh, let's take a look at Tesla uh, trading up 201.51. Of course, the Roadster is coming out. And this is some kind of uh, crossover production with SpaceX, which is a cool little marketing uh, campaign for them. Uh, Tesla still at 201.52. Again, demand for EV is going down. We are seeing consumers in general kind of push back against uh, increases in prices of everything, right? I mean, from vehicles, you see, you know, greater consumption of used vehicles, okay? And uh, you're, you're even seeing it in stuff like at the grocery store where generic uh, goods are being purchased at a higher rate now, you know? And so I don't know what the price point, I'll have to look this up because I, I think it has been mentioned, but the price point of the Roadster and these, you know, new quote unquote top of the line EVs. And, I, you know, I think on, you know, a few years at least going out, you're going to see kind of a suppressed demand in it. Let's take a look at Steel Dynamics, man. It's just the uh, little engine that won't quit. We are at 132.55. Now, again, it's nerve wracking for me a little bit. Of course, you had a lot of volume coming up, okay, kind of past this 120 area. And we had been seeing kind of a trade in from November up until about December 14th in that 110 to 120. Shot up on some interesting volume, right? I mean, obviously there's a lot of conflict here. A traversal back down to 110. And then we're up at 130. Now this is all on light volume, okay? And that, again, would tell me that maybe this isn't phenomenal, but you keep seeing it defy this kind of analysis. It's very interesting. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, we actually have a caller on the line. This is Tom in Tampa. Tom, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Hey, good, Jacob. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Uh, we're taking a look at uh, VOO, the Vanguard mimic, right? Right. Right. Perfect. So what are you looking uh, at with this? Let me ask you, yeah. is, is, is Amazon still one of the holdings in that fund? Uh, let me check for you. I would assume it probably is, but let me just take a look here. I don't have access to it on Thinkorswim, so I'll have to... Take a look over on Vanguard. Because didn't Amazon jump over the New York Stock Exchange? Is that what I'm hearing? I am not sure. Give me one second. So we have this is from Vanguard. So you have your top right. holding is is Microsoft. Okay, that's seven point two three percent. Apple six point six. Nvidia three point seven, and then Amazon three point four. So it's it's one of the larger weightings, okay. uh, at least in okay. VOO. Yeah, I, 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 th I thought I heard something. Uh, Amazon's trading over on the New York Stock Exchange now, or something like that. I, I don't know. Maybe I misheard something. Like that. Yeah, I'm not sure what that would what that would be. You said it's it's trading what now? Uh, Amazon is trading on the the uh, New York Stock Exchange now. Does that sound right? It wouldn't so, matter though. It's still it jo it, well, there. it joins it's the Dow. Uh, um, yeah, it, well, it's also got Berkshire Hathaway in there too, and Tesla. They're in that uh, as well. Yeah, so. let's see. After Amazon, you got Meta, Google, uh, Class A, and then Google Class C, and then you have Berkshire and then Tesla. Berkshire, and this yeah. is Class B, is going to be about one point seven, and Tesla one point two seven percent. Yeah, that that yeah that fund's been kicking ass, man. It's really I love well. VOO. It's I mean, I have a good you know, portion of my personal portfolio in VOO. I mean, it's just, it's kind of a no-brainer, right? I think it's a yeah, lower right, expense right. ratio. Yeah, totally, man. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a lower expense yeah. ratio compared to SPY. And I think, you know, you could say it's, you know, negligible, but it, I think it's done better overall than the SPY, just slightly, you know? Um, but right. I, yeah, I love this. And, you know, here's another right. one, Tom. When we get back into a low interest rate structure, this, if you can see the screen here, now we're a little bit low and these growth ETFs get better, of course, when you have lower interest rates because capital is cheaper. But VUG, man, I mean, take a look at this one when you get the chance, like on your own time. Um, but I love this for when the when the economy is really chugging along and we're seeing some big growth. So, yeah, and those companies are just like Tom O'Brien says they're just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he's the one uh, that I found out really on the boot. I mean, he brought it up one time on his show. I'm like, man, he's totally right, you know. Absolutely. So, and, and, you know, hold yeah. all else in the environment. I mean, it's it's almost like Darwinian. You know, you got these bigger companies that have all these resources 
and and for the most part they just keep going you know bar some major black swan event you know so awesome deal right yeah cool. well tom is there anything else i can look at for you no i think that'll do it i uh, wish we could get some uh something going on with gdx but it's just going to take time that's the way it goes that's what it is and I, I don't know if you listen to some of the interviews you know tom has with tim ord and everything and and Tim oh, Ward, yeah, this is yeah. you know he see, he sees all the bullish profiles, and he's he's straight up when he says like we just don't know when it's going to get triggered. But I, I hear you. That's that's one of the things I you I know, look at a lot. It's kind of like when Peter Lynch ran that massive you know the, the Magellan Fund back in the eighties yeah, and nineties. Okay. I was reading a book on the laws of unbreakable success. They said what that guy would do is he would hold stocks sometimes for long periods of time, mm -hmm. sometimes up to seven to eight years. And you know, hey, well, hopefully it won't be that long. But right. you know what I mean. They, but those that that fund was just they they finally had to close that fund. It got so big back in the eighties and nineties. No kidding. So yeah, fascinating yeah, stuff. Yeah. It was called the Fidelity Magellan Fund back then. So right on. Uh, well, I'll takes what he's done. He's a he's a powerhouse. Yeah, love it. Well, Tom, thank you so much for calling in. Okay, Jacob, have a great day. You're okay. doing a great job. You and Tommy. Thank so, you so much. All right, I, I really appreciate the okay, kind words. Take care now, Tom. You bet. Okay, bye bye. Fantastic. Bye. All right, and then, uh, yeah, so again, folks, that's VOO. Uh, VOO is just, it's, it's basically, you know, like a mock S&P 500 from Vanguard. Uh, of course, I just listed out the weightings. If you're ever curious, like, what's in an ETF, you can just type in, you know, the ticker and then weightings, right? So usually the company that's providing the ETF uh, will, will have all that included. And, you know, it's, that can be a little bit more personalized, but for the most part, it's a pretty good clone. And then VUG, this is this is actually a growth index. And I tell you, like, oh man, from like 2018 to you know maybe last year or two years ago, that was just a, I loved it. What a star. Anyways, I'm I'm yapping, and we have another caller on the line. We got George from Newport Richie. He's taking a look at the gold contract. George, is that correct? Maybe we don't have George anymore. Hello, Jacob. Oh, George, George. Oh, George, how you doing? Excellent. How are you, sir? Good. I recognize your voice, George. Yeah, I'm enjoying uh, listening to your show. Absolutely. So, how have you been? It's been a little bit since we spoke. You're looking at the gold contract right now, right? Yeah, everything is good. Hey, how about the weather, Jacob? First it's summer like. A little bit warmer. Florida, today. Over 80. <laughs> this this uh, Florida weather will will put you in a tailspin. Honestly, I mean it was cold like what three days ago, and now we're kind of hot today. So, but you're right. I think spring's right around the corner there, George. Yeah, yeah. Today's uh, over eighty. is a uh, is a beautiful yeah. thing. <laughs> I didn't uh, dress yeah, pretty well. Speaking yeah. of the gold, yes. I was gonna. I, 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 I would like your take, but let me start by saying that uh, the gold the man at two thousand plus dollars an ounce mm -hmm. and uh, the miners being such underperformers you see if um, we knew gold at 2000 plus and gdx and the uh, gold miner stocks being at these low levels yeah. i don't think anyone was going to uh, see that coming no and uh, to me to me, the issue is the cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and uh, mm. like. It looks like the money from the miners is going straight to cryptos uh, until this changes. I don't think we're going to see these miners go anywhere, but it, we might be very close because uh, Bitcoin is approaching all-time highs, yep. and uh, once that does a, a double top, maybe then things uh, look better for the miners. Right, you might. Take? Right, you might see some capital exiting out of Bitcoin, just in profit taking. And listen, what what you're saying, you know, is an interesting point. I mean, there has always been this conversation, right, that crypto was going to replace the function of gold in the economy, right? Just as a store of value. And I've, I have argued against that historically because what we've seen gold actually, or excuse me, what we see cryptocurrency actually act as is just a very high and rapidly appreciating asset, right? Which I would say that's not what you would expect in a store of wealth, quote unquote, right? Just something that can kind of be inflation uh, resistant. However, 
you know, you get some of the academics who look at it as being a competitor to gold. And most importantly, you have Larry Fink coming out and saying that Bitcoin is going to be this new vehicle where what gold was, Bitcoin is going to be. And Bitcoin is better because it has a finite amount, essentially. Right. I mean, of course, there's a finite amount of gold, too. But the, but the differences are very stark. So I, I, what you're saying is kind of an interesting point, right? And if, if we see anything happen, whether that's regulatory um, or whether that's just vast profit taking and people wanting to go elsewhere, uh, I think we might see miners come back. Uh, George, if you want to stay on the line, we have a break, um, but you're more than welcome to stay with us and we can chat a little bit more after the break. All right, Jacob. Okay, awesome. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, before we went to the break, we were on the phone with George. Uh, he's talking a little bit about gold and sharing his thoughts with uh, how crypto might be competing with a lot of the gold miners. Uh, George, you still there? That's all right. No problem. The, the point is, is there there seems to be some conversation and, and again, at high levels of finance uh, that you're seeing Bitcoin at least taking over from what gold had historically done. And you think about it, too. Right. Like you don't really need to just maintain it inflation levels if you're if you're beating it by such a large amount. And I mean, and let's talk about that. Right. OK, so we have Bitcoin at 60,000. Right. I mean, this is 
huge movement. We're looking at grayscale Bitcoin right now. This was a trust that kind of went, you know, basically into an ETF. Okay, this were really the first of its kind in a sense. Um, we're up about 5.37% today. Uh, you know, what's, what's going on with it? Okay, what's going to occur is something called the halving. And this is when basically output for solving a hash, okay, is the, the, what uh, crypto is, you know, Bitcoin is created, this is proof of work, is you have these hash blocks, right? And hash is, you know, just, it's kind of like an encryption in a sense. And you need to basically run it through computers in order to try to solve this hash. And once you solve the hash, the miners that contributed uh, get Bitcoin or portions of Bitcoin or however it works. There's something called the halving, which means uh, that same amount of effort to create one Bitcoin today will create half a Bitcoin in the future. Okay, so this obviously decreases supply, a new supply of Bitcoin. Uh, this increases price, right? It's a price quantity kind of deal. Um, and I think mainly what you hear, uh, you know, so there's that kind of more, you know, learned understanding of what's occurring. But I think really, and, and this is from like, you know, being on the, you know, uh, among the common folk and everything, when we're all talking about like, what do we invest in and stuff? I mean, it's, most of us are just like, okay, you hear having, all you know is that means Bitcoin, Bitcoin go up, right? I mean, it's, it's brutal, but I think this is like what you see. And um, the general consensus among most people, you know, even if you don't have any experience in, in finance or anything like that or trading, is that Bitcoin is going to continue to go up because every time it goes down, right? And this is something to do with media, I feel like every time it goes down, it gets, you know, dunked on, I suppose. Like, oh, look, there we go. Sh showed you guys, right? And then we see it go right back up and we're at 60,000 again. And uh, I think enough of those cycles have occurred to where it's your common person. Um, who's not involved in this kind of stuff is, is going to invest in the in the thing, right? I mean, it's up it's up four point five percent. You know, that was last trading in twenty twenty one like that, and it just it, it came down entirely, and now now we're right back up. Uh, and then of course with these heavy hitters like Larry Fink behind it, and, and some of these other large scale ETFs, um, you you just get a lot of attraction. I mean, obviously the demand's there in the ETFs, and you have these funds buy more Bitcoin. Um, so it's pretty fascinating stuff, and uh, we'll stand to see, you know, if, if there is, for whatever reason, uh, some, you know, aversion developed to this kind of stuff. If, if, we, if we see, you know, some kind of inverse correlation with miners, I mean, that'll be kind of interesting to see, right? And that's really, uh, I think, you know, what we have to see as investors, okay? Like, does, is what we're seeing in gold in this malaise we have and these kind of strange breakdowns, is that due because the capital that would be flowing into these and the miners and everything is actually going into Bitcoin? I, you know, it'll be interesting to see. There's probably some data there that supports both sides, I would argue. Anyways, oh, let's see. This is another stock. I got someone emailed me on this. This is Lemonade. And this, uh, this viewer, oh, by the way, I wanted to say too, like, I love the calls. Like, I, you know, I actually, uh, was I it was it was a great time I actually got to meet George in, in person right just like randomly it happened and he was just great to talk to and I have a few of you guys you know who email me and, and call me sometimes just to chat and I think it's awesome that's what's so cool about this company right like you know this is financial services and everything um, and I, I think a lot of people can have an idea that's like a stuffy kind of concept uh, but getting to interact with some of you guys especially people who've been here for so long it's just so fascinating right I think it's just a neat thing, and, and so I really appreciate it. This, uh, this also comes from someone that I uh, talk to a lot. This, he invests in Lemonade, right? This is more of a meme stock. Okay, obviously you had this massive run-up uh, recently after some guidance. The, the, excuse me, after the uh, financials were dropped. Uh, they were decent, okay, to some extent, right? Like loss had been less. Um, and then there's also some talk, I suppose, of there is going to be a short squeeze on the stock, right? So you get all these kind of Reddit guys jumping in here. And this one was confirmed that it was being spoken about, right, on Wall Street Bets. You know, for instance, that company Hollow, uh, that blew up, everyone was saying that was a meme stock. That's a weird one because it was no conversation on any of the meme stock forums of investing in Hollow. So kind of ask yourself, like, who dumped in all that money? Well, for Lemonade, we can be pretty sure that this was in part, I suppose, rallied by, um, 
you know, Reddit guys trying to attempt a short squeeze. Of course, we had a massive fall down today. Lemonade does insurance, uh, and, and their, their focus essentially, multi-line insurance, and their focus essentially is, uh, or rather their competitive edge is that they use AI. And you know, that's a, almost getting tiring to hear a company be like, hey, uh, we use AI and just invest in me because of that. That was like what this was almost. Well, anyways, we're down about 27% today. We can talk a little bit about that. Uh, they had a call earlier and it wasn't as frilly, I suppose, as people had expected on it. Um, so eliminated stock dropped 9.1% in after hours, as was yesterday, uh, trading after the insurer disclosed plans to double its growth budget this year, but it doesn't expect Q1 or full year revenue to reach the average analyst estimates for those periods. The company said it plans to double its growth budget from 2024 from 55 million it spent, excuse me, from the 55 million it spent in 2023. In dollar terms, Lemonade expects to add about 50% more in force premium in 2024 than it did in 2023. Also, the, you know, they reduced their losses, okay, because they were getting more cash flow in, but a lot of that cash flow, and I, I was trying to find where they would have this data, and I, I you know, I'll, I'll look a little bit harder as well, um, but it's hard to say, but I, I know that a lot of this extra revenue generation was because of increasing premiums, right? And insurance companies were having a struggle with inflation and they had to increase premiums. I mean, we even saw with CPI uh, for year over year, one of the major drivers uh, was insurance. Um, so, y you know, you get to a point where it's like, okay, you're making better revenue, but are you adding more people in? Or are you just charging more for this kind of service? I think that's a valid question when you're kind of trying to analyze a stock you want to invest in and kind of look at it on the long term. Anyways, uh, let's see here. The AI-driven insurer, insurer expects Q1 revenue of 111 to 113 million with an average analyst estimate of 119.5. So, you know, that's, I think, partly what's kind of driving this down. And again, with these meme stocks, it's just a strange uh, kind of battlefield uh, constantly with it. Oh, let's take a look here. I wanted to look at, I believe this is, I took a shot in the dark because I don't look at this company at all. Yes. Look at that. Whoa. Beyond Meat up 34% today. We'll talk a little bit about that when we get back from the break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. 
That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. All right, welcome back, folks. Before we went to the break, we're talking a little bit about Beyond Meat. That is B Y N D is the ticker. We're up 35% uh, percent today on absurd volume, you know, relatively speaking. Uh. Let's take a look at why that happened. Okay. Basically, they're just cutting costs. We can talk a little bit more about that. Volume did increase as well, which is good because they're having they're having a hard time in the states, to be honest. And uh, I don't see that really changing. I think it's more expensive. I think it's probably less palatable. I mean, you're kind of banking on uh, appealing to people's like moral sensibilities and to an extent health sensibilities as well, but. I would argue that there is a pivot point right now in American culture about, you know, the perspective of plant-based diets as being solely healthy, right? So I think you have a lot of, you know, I'm not saying anything about that. I'm just saying that it exists, right? And so let's talk a little bit about it just from financial perspective or business perspective. Uh, on Tuesday, the top market expectations for the fourth quarter revenue and resilient demand for its faux meat patties in key markets outside of the United States and said it would ramp up pricing actions in 2024. The company's shares, which fell 27.7% in 2023, jumped about 84% in extended trade on Tuesday, as CEO Ethan Brown also said Beyond Meat would steeply reduce operating expense and cash use in the year. About 40% of the company's shares were short at the end of January. Uh, to counter weak demand in the U.S., this is the interesting part, Beyond Meat, which supplies its pant plant-based meat patties to fast food chains such as McDonald's, uh, has lowered prices and resorted to higher discounts. Okay, that's something interesting to note. Faux meat is pricier than traditional meat, we all know that, and I just went through some ideas. They, they say it's mainly budget, but I, I do think too that it's just not palatable for a lot of people, and appealing to morals isn't always the most effective thing, I guess, in business. I'm not saying it shouldn't be done, but just like, you know. Uh, the company has also been able to sustain demand for plant-based meat in international markets. Okay. The volume rose 8% in the quarter ended, uh, ending December 31st compared to 35 So that's an interesting thing, right? You're know, breaking into new markets. Your volumes are increasing. That is positive for a company. That might, in some capacity, warrant an increase in the stock. Okay, I don't get why it's a 34% increase. Now, of course, this is kind of a correction back down from this wild move. Uh, up to about 12.02. Um, still, I, I think this company has a lot of hurdles to meet. I would be curious as well. One of, the, one of the big ways this got hit online when Beyond Meat was becoming more popular, I suppose, or like getting into store shelves, is just how many ingredients are in it. And ingredients that aren't always, uh, uh, I say like hyper-processed ingredients, right? I mean, this is a ton of polyunsaturated fatty acids in the forms of like canola oil and palm oil and all these kind of things. Um, you know, obviously a bunch of preservatives in it, a bunch of additives to make it even resemble meat, right? I mean, it's, it's like oil and plant meal, essentially, right? Uh, made to mimic meat. I think overall, that's going to be the major hurdle Beyond Meat is going to have to get over. 
one, from the perspective of Americans who are becoming health conscious in a kind of strange way, and then two, with Europeans, I, I would be interested to see if their mix is different in Europe, right? Because really, I mean, look at the back next time you're at a Publix or, you know, whatever chain you have. I don't know what they have, like, in Massachusetts, but take a look, and, I mean, there's a lot of additives in it. And I think that makes it kind of a complicated product um, that I don't know if it has as great of a demand uh, that would warrant some increase like this. It stands to be seen. And maybe I also have a bias uh, just against it that's, you know, not always conducive for in investing in something, right? So, I mean, uh, you know, I can be honest about that. Anyways, what we can say for certain is that it is up 34.77%. That is the gain it has sustained. Uh, net revenue for the fourth quarter fell 7.8% to $73 million, but topped the average analyst estimates of 66. And the company's full-year net revenue forecast in the range of, is in the range of $315 million to $345 million. And that's largely below market expectations of 343.8. It reported a bigger than expected loss of 92 cents per share for the fourth quarter compared with the expectations of 88 cents. And that is the current edition of the Beyond Meat story. Polestar, let's see. We're talking a little bit about... I groan just because I don't know where these EVs are going, really. And I think that everything else kind of shows. And, you know, it's not hard to get a 20% increase at such low prices to begin with, right? If you're holding it, you know, it's a pretty good return. Uh, Polestar, okay, if you've not you've seen Polestars from Sweden, they're neat-looking cars and they're EV, okay? Polestar said on Wednesday it had raised a $950 million loan, interesting, from a bank syndicate helping to fill a gap left when Volvo Cars said it would stop funding the electric car maker. New York-based listed shares of the Swedish EV maker rose over 25% on the news. Investors' enthusiasm for EV makers have cooled again. Yeah, that's how I feel about it, too. And I don't know... Again, it'll be interesting to see how these companies that have not made vehicles in the past and are just entering in the market now but entering under the EV line are going to be able to compete in any way. Okay, you have Tesla, which just dominates out because they have years on everyone, right? And then you have your traditional car companies who are going to be able to fill that gap in it. I, I don't know. And I mean, I, the stock price of this reflects it as well. It's 178. We'll have to see, you know, taking on loans is nice because you're not diluting. I mean, you can't really dilute the price any further. Um, but, you know, taking a $1 billion loan, uh, because Volvo pulled out, pulled out. I mean, there's reasons Volvo pulled out, right? So I don't know. Anyways, again, this big news, it puts a big, you know, indicator on it when you get like 20% uh, increase. All right. So let me see here. Where did it go? We're playing uh, load computer. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, okay. The, the, okay, this is it. The lore. This is interesting to me. Now, this isn't uh, so much, you know, stock market related, but I do like kind of spanning out sometimes because I think it's just good to get a full kind of view of what's going on and different ideas. This is super crazy, especially in a moment of inflation and trying to reduce inflation. And I think that there are going to be some issues with the CPI coming out next month. I mean, we what was positive is that you know, before it turned out that core CPI was really what was contributing to at least to a year over year growth in, in a major way. Uh, you know, we were looking at total CPI, which includes, you know, the volatile CPI is going to be oil or energy, excuse me, and food prices. It will, energy had actually stayed pretty stagnant at least year over year and kind of reduced a little bit. But now we're seeing an increase, okay, in crude oil. So I think this is going to add a little bit, uh, an upward pressure, okay. Again, this pushes out any kind of horizon for the Fed lowering rates. And now you're seeing something like this. Now, this is, I, I, I believe, you know, restrained only to uh, a few areas. But this is a unique idea. And it's interesting to have it done in a period of inflation. So as Americans are getting $5,000 to shop, and we'll talk a little bit about what that means under a new bill. And, folks, this is interesting. And it might be an interesting way uh, that some areas kind of generate more income. For local businesses folks stay tuned we'll be right back
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Before we went to the break, pulled up this interesting story. This is uh, titled Americans Get 5000 to Shop at a New Bill. We're moving to Michigan, folks. That's right. This Made in the USA tax credit, as it's known, seeks to revitalize American manufacturing by providing up to 2,500 in tax credits to individuals and 5,000 for couples purchasing goods that meet the FTC Made in USA standard. Of course, it uh, excludes all these things, <laughs> tobacco, firearms, vehicles. Uh, regardless, uh, that's super cool. Um, I think that's I think that's huge for a lot of couples, right? And huge for small businesses. You know, you want to kind of keep it in that. And we've always had that kind of buy American, uh, you know, belief here. And I think that's not a bad way uh, to achieve that, right? By just giving them a tax credit. Anyways, we only have a short amount of time. I want to talk about this. Just and again, this is just more of this global concept that's super interesting and something to chew on for the end of the day. Is activists are urging Nigeria to delay Shell's 2.4 billion sale of assets in deeply polluted Niger Delta. It is insane because the reason, the fact that Shell doesn't have control over these areas is why it's so polluted. This is unbelievable if you guys have not read this before. Essentially, long story short, you have this new government kind of come in and they uh, essentially really complicated interactions between Shell, right, uh, and, and other larger oil companies. Um, what this resulted in was a loss of jobs for people in Nigeria, which has one of the largest reserves of Bonnie Sweet crude uh, in the world. 
And so what, what happened, okay? So the government didn't give them any other options for re-education or new jobs, so basically you started getting pirates who go into the Niger Delta and just straight tap the reserve. Uh, I mean, it is the most yeah, crude thing you could imagine. You should seriously look this up if you guys haven't seen it, right? And it's just completely unregulated. And, and they have these vast concrete pits where they're refining uh, diesel and it is just horrible for the environment. And it's because you don't have a competent company in there actually providing jobs for people. So it's, it, I just find that kind of interesting to think about. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. I believe Tom will be back tomorrow. I always enjoy being on with you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.